Hello everyone, in this video I'll be talking about the different air masses and frontal systems. So let's start with what is a front. A front is a boundary between two different air masses. These air masses are usually in motion and have different properties. So these are the two different air masses. This is the air mass number one and this is number two. And the boundary you see over here, this is a front. Over here in this figure, it's a warm front but we'll talk about it later. So the idea was to know that a front is a boundary between two different air masses. And both the air masses have different densities. And this difference is due to the different temperatures and humidity of the air mass. Now before we discuss the different type of fronts, let's talk about what is an air mass. So an air mass is a very large body of air in which the horizontal and the vertical distribution is almost uniform. An air mass can cover an area of thousands of square kilometers, so you can imagine how massive it is. The characteristics of an air mass depends on its origin and the course of its travel. So if an air mass is originated over water, it will have more humidity as compared to an air mass that is originated over land. So over land it will be dry and over water it will be moist. Similarly, an air mass which is originated over a colder area will have a lower temperature as compared to an air mass that is originated over a warm area. Now these are the different types of air masses. So we have the polar continental air mass, we have the polar maritime air mass, we have tropical continental and tropical maritime air masses. We also have the arctic and the equatorial air masses. Ok, so here just note that tropical means hot, polar means cold, continental means originated over land and maritime means originated over water. So if you know these four things, you will be able to decode all these air masses. Ok, so the polar continental would mean very cold and over land. As polar means originated around the poles and continental we saw, it means that originated over land. So since it's originated over land, it will be dry and because of the poles, it will be cold. So polar continental air mass is cold and dry. Similarly, polar maritime air mass will be cold and moist because maritime we saw was originated over the water and there is a lot of humidity over water. So that's why it's moist. If we talk about the tropical continental, we see that tropical was warm and continental was over land. So this air mass will be warm and dry. And similarly, the tropical maritime will be warm and moist because maritime was over water. And water has a lot of humidity making it moist. Now the arctic air mass has extremely low temperature. The humidity is very less in winter and it increases a bit in the summer. This air mass is originated over the polar regions. So it's over here. The equatorial air mass, as the name suggests, is originated around the equator where the temperature is very high and the humidity is also a lot. So this air mass is quite warm and moist. Now let's talk about the fronts. So these are the different type of fronts and the two main ones are the warm and the cold front. So this is the warm front and this is the cold front. Let's talk about the warm front first. So in a warm front, the warm air is overtaking the cold air. So over here we have the warm air and here is the cold air. Warm air is lighter as compared to the cold air. So it glides over the cold air like this. Now in this front we see a lot of stratiform clouds because the slope is not very steep. The slope is around 1 is to 150 and a warm front moves very slowly. Its speed is around 10 to 15 knots. It is so slow because it's very difficult for the warm air to push the cold air because cold air is denser. Now what does this 1 is to 150 mean? It means that for every 150 nautical miles the front covers horizontally. The air will rise up by 1 nautical mile. So 150 nautical miles horizontally and 1 nautical mile vertically which is quite a shallow slope. So this you see is the warm front. It is actually a boundary between the warm air and the cold air. So this is the warm front. So all this area over here is ahead of the front. 
so i'll write ahead this area over here is at the front and all this area is behind the front i'm specifying it because we'll be talking about the characteristics of all these areas so in a warm front we experience low pressure ahead of the front and this low pressure is because of the rising air so all this rising air gives low pressure on the surface because we saw whenever there is a low pressure the air is going up like this so if this was the ground we experience low pressure over here and the same is happening over here all this air is rising so ahead of the front we have low pressure the winds over here backs and strengthens we can observe a lot of clouds like stratus nimbostratus alto stratus cirro stratus and cirrus the precipitation ahead of warm front is very heavy and it's steady and this steady precipitation gives very poor visibility during rain and if we talk about the temperature it's quite less because we saw cool air was ahead of the warm air and we're talking about the area that is ahead of the front so here we know we have cool air so the temperature will be less now let's talk about what happens at a warm front so at a warm front when it's passing right above us we can expect the temperature to rise because obviously now the warm air is approaching the pressure over here remains steady the winds are variable and the clouds that we see over here are the stratus clouds and if we talk about the precipitation here so at a warm front the rain stops and it starts to drizzle the visibility is really really bad because of fog now i'll tell you why do we have fog so we just saw that we had a lot of stratus cloud at a warm front and we know that stratus cloud when seen on the ground is nothing but fog so that's why we have a lot of fog and poor visibility at a warm front now coming behind the warm front after it has passed so the pressure over here starts to rise the temperature over here is warm and this is because we had warm air that was coming behind the cold air so obviously now we are behind the warm front the warm front has passed us so that warm air will increase the temperature the winds over here veer and weakens and we see scattered stratocumulus clouds there is no rain and the visibility is also good over here a warm front is indicated like this on a surface pressure chart and these semicircles are in the direction of the motion of a warm front so that means the warm front is moving this way you can refer to this table and learn all these characteristics because you can be asked anything from this and also there is no need to mug up all these if you know the reason why it's happening I know this table looks very difficult at first but if you know the proper reason for everything it will be a very easy task to learn it Now let's talk about the cold front So in a cold front the cold air is overtaking the warmer air that's ahead So we have the warm air over here and the cold air is over here which is coming behind the warm air and we know that cold air is heavy so what happens is that the cold air undercuts the warm air which forces the warm air to start rising so if this is the ground we had warm air over here and suddenly the cold air starts coming and it undercuts the warm air because it's heavy so the warm air starts rising because the cold air is pushing it up now in a cold front very massive clouds of vertical development are observed and this is because the cold air is forcing the warm air to rise the slope of a cold front is 1 is to 50 that means for every 50 nautical miles it's going ahead one nautical mile is going up this shows that the slope of a cold front is very very steep the speed of a cold front is about 30 knots which is two times more than a warm front now if we look at this diagram we can clearly see that the cold air is coming from here and it's pushing the warm air to go up which leads to these clouds of large vertical development and this is the cold front over here which is a boundary between the cold and the warm air 
in a cold front we can also observe line squalls line squalls is nothing but a lot of cumulonimbus clouds in one line so when we see a lot of cb clouds in a single line we call it a line squall now again in this front we'll be talking about the three regions which is ahead of the front at the front and behind the front so ahead of a cold front we again experience low pressure which is because of the rising air because here also the warm air is rising and this rising air will again lead to low pressure so ahead of cold front we have low pressure the temperature is warm and this was because we had warm air ahead and the cold air was behind it and since we are ahead of the front we'll experience warm air which will increase the temperature the wind over here backs and strengthens the clouds observed ahead of cold front are cirrus cirrostratus cumulonimbus and alto cumulus castellaneous clouds the clouds give heavy precipitation and the visibility is very poor in rain and we can observe line squalls ahead of cold front now at a cold front when it is passing right above us so when we are over here we can observe the temperature starting to fall because obviously now the cold air is coming to us the pressure over here is minimum and this minimum pressure over here is because we are right under a cb cloud and this area is a low pressure area also the winds over here will be gusty and squally the clouds are either cumulus or cumulonimbus which gives heavy showers and because of which the visibility is poor if we talk about the conditions behind a cold front after it has passed we observe cold temperatures because now we are in a region where we have cold air the pressure over here starts to rise and thus the winds veer and weakens the clouds which we can spot in this area are just isolated cumulus clouds the heavy showers clear up and the visibility is bad initially due to fog but it improves gradually on a surface pressure chart a cold front is indicated like this and again these triangles are in the direction of the movement of the front So here is the summary table for a cold front because obviously that diagram was very very messy. Now in both of these fronts how do we learn where the winds are backing or veering? Because we see over here also before the front the winds were backing and strengthening and after the front the winds were veering and weakening. Similarly in the warm front it was like this. But how do we learn this? So we know that in the northern hemisphere in a high pressure area the winds move clockwise and in a low pressure area the winds move anti clockwise and we know that when the winds are moving clockwise it's known as veering and when the winds are moving anti clockwise it's backing okay we also know that the winds in a low pressure zone are stronger as compared to the winds of a high pressure zone and this was because of the isobars In a low pressure zone the isobars are very closely packed and in a high pressure zone the isobars are very far from each other so in the low pressure zones the winds will be backing and strengthening both for the warm and the cold front and in the high pressure areas the winds will be veering and weakening both for the warm and the cold front So if you know all these reasons you won't have to mug up all the characteristics and you can easily remember everything. Now these are the basic differences between both the fronts that we've talked about. You can go through this table on your own because we have discussed everything. Now moving ahead. The next type of fronts are known as occluded fronts and these fronts form when a cold front coming from behind catches up a warm front that is ahead. This is quite possible because we know that a cold front moves at twice the speed of a warm front. So in this diagram this is a cold front and this is a warm front. And what we see over here is that the cold front is approaching and is catching up to this warm front. Now there are two types of occluded fronts, a cold occlusion and a warm occlusion. Both of these are when a cold front catches up a warm front. 
So cold occlusion is seen when a very cold air mass is replacing the less cold air that is ahead and warm air is seen above. This is common in winters and it's known as the western disturbance. You should watch the Indian climatology video on winter season to know about the western disturbances. Just to give an idea about what's a western disturbance. So in the winter season, we already have the cool air in India and colder air from the Mediterranean Sea or we can say that the colder air from west comes and replaces the already cold air that was in India and this results in a cold occlusion and this is what it looks like so we have cold air ahead we have colder air behind and the warm air is pushed up now a warm occlusion is seen when less cold air is replacing the colder air that is ahead and warm air is again pushed up warm occlusions are not very common in India in occluded fronts the weather is quite intense and we observe embedded cumulonimbus clouds so the cumulonimbus cloud is embedded here like this between the two cold air masses one is over here and the other is over here now on a surface pressure chart an occluded front is indicated like this it has both the cold and the warm front and this is because it's a combination of both the fronts now moving ahead Next we'll talk about a stationary front. So a stationary front has two different air masses on both sides. So the warm air is over here, the cold air is over here and thus this is a stationary front which is the boundary between warm and cold air masses. The winds in a stationary front blow parallel to the front and opposite to each other. So here also we can see that the winds are blowing like this and on this side the winds are blowing like this. So opposite and parallel to each other. An example of a stationary front is the polar front which is over here. And a stationary front is indicated like this. Okay, now there are these two important terms which can be asked in the exam. So these are the frontogenesis and frontolysis. So frontogenesis means the formation or strengthening of a front. And frontolysis means the dissipation or weakening of a front. So if the strength of a front is increasing, it's frontogenesis and if the strength of a front is decreasing, it's frontolysis. That's it. So this was everything you need to know about the air masses and the various frontal systems. There is nothing to worry about for this topic if you understood everything properly. Feel free to DM me and let me know if you have any questions or doubts. Also, my friends here are giving free demo classes for DGC exams and they're also offering some discounts. So if anyone's interested, these are their academy's details so you can get in touch with them. Perfect. And in the coming CPL videos, I'll be discussing some important topics from navigation. So I'll see you there and thanks for watching.